Welcome, everyone. This is Becky at TechSoup Global joining us today for the Microsoft OneNote Capture Your Creativity webinar. We appreciate you joining us for this webinar. We will get started right now after a little bit of housekeeping. You should be hearing the audio through your speaker on your computer. If not, you can also dial in to access the webinar through the code that's been chatted out in the chat bar. We are using ReadyTalk today, so you can chat. Rather than raising your hand, ideally go ahead and chat any questions to us. If you have any technical issues, feel free to chat them out to us using this little box on the corner of your screen. And we have Allie on the back end who will help grab those questions or help you with any technical issues throughout the webinar. We keep all lines muted for the duration other than our presenters so that we have nice clear audio for all of you and so that we can record this event to have a good archive. If you lose your Internet connection, feel free to reconnect using the link in the confirmation or reminder emails that you received earlier today. If you lose your phone connection, you can redial the phone number or hear the audio through the link in your email. If you need to contact ReadyTalk for any support, you can dial 1-800-843-9166. As a reminder, we are recording this session. This will be available on our website along with all past webinars at TechSoup.org slash community slash events hyphen webinars. You will re receive a link to this presentation, any materials discussed, the PowerPoint slides, and any links later this afternoon. If you are tweeting, feel free to use the Twitter hashtag pound TechSoup to join the discussion on social media. With that, I'd like to take a moment to welcome you again to Microsoft OneNote, Capture Your Creativity. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I am with TechSoup Global. And we will be joined today by Doug Thomas of Microsoft. Unfortunately, our second speaker, Jan Toledano, has had a family emergency and won't be joining us. But we have some great examples from nonprofits, from TechSoup users internally, and a lot of great demonstration of OneNote from Doug to go through. So I'd like to first introduce myself. Again, I'm Becky Wiegand. I am an Interactive Events Producer here at TechSoup. I've worked here for about five years and previously had worked at a series of small nonprofits in both Washington, D.C., Oakland, California, and San Francisco where I was the accidental techie having to figure out how to use many of the technologies in my office place and deciding on technologies for our office place without much technical expertise. So I've been in the shoes of a lot of people who may be participating in this call today. And Doug is joining us from Office.com where he works presenting about OneNote in weekly webinars and has presented on this topic and is a great expert on it, teaches courses on it. So he'll be joining us to share his expertise and show us a live demo of how to use OneNote. For today's agenda, we'll be doing a few polls just to gauge kind of how you use OneNote now if you use it at all. And then Doug will walk us through his live demo, highlighting some features and showing us some example notepads. Like I said, Jan is not able to join us today because of an emergency. So I'll be showing some examples of how we use it here at TechSoup for different case studies, for different purposes and business uses. And then I'll talk a little bit about how to get OneNote if you don't already have it. And then we'll go to Q&A. You can feel free, to, however, to answer or ask questions in the chat throughout the duration of the webinar. Like I said, we have Ali in the back end. And we also have Gretchen Dio from Microsoft. Both will be on the back end to help field questions and answer them throughout the duration of the webinar. Just to give a little bit of background about TechSoup, if you've only joined us today for the first time, we are a nonprofit and we are part of TechSoup Global, working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization has the technology, knowledge, and resources they need to operate at their full potential. Part of that is providing webinars like this where we help, hope to help you make decisions about your technology, make decisions about what you need to use in your office and what might not work best for you. Make decisions about what um, make decisions about what is the most 
useful for your limited time and money and staff. We have served the nonprofit and library sectors. This is just a little bit of information about the impact to those sectors from our product donation program. And we also provide weekly events like this and articles and blog posts. And you can find us at TechSoup.org. So I'd like to take a moment and ask a few questions of our audience. So feel free to let us know. Go ahead and click on your screen to tell us what your experience is with using OneNote so far. Have you never used it? Rarely, occasionally, regularly, or are you a pro who should be teaching this webinar instead? Just take a moment. We have about 135 people on the line with us right now. We want to make sure everybody has a chance to tell us their answer so we can hopefully tailor this event more suitably to your needs. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results. And it looks like 58% have never used it. That's kind of great for us because that's, we know a lot of people's experience that it's on your desktop already, or you may have it installed as part of the Office Suite and just not know what to do with it. So hopefully we'll take some time today to show you the different ways that it can be used and useful to you. And then I also want to ask which version of OneNote or the Office Suite are you using? Are you using it as part of an Office Suite? And if so, which one? Or are you using a standalone OneNote? So you can let us know. That also helps us tailor a little bit better to your specific needs, hopefully. Go ahead and just take a moment to answer that. And we've got about 95 people who have answered so far. Just going to give it a few more seconds. Looks like the, the majority of our participants today are using Office 2010. So we'll be looking at primarily some of Office 2013 since that is the latest version. Um, there are a lot of similarities though, so this, what we cover today should also mostly apply to those using Office 2010 and earlier versions too, hopefully. And about 20% using Office 2013 already. Okay, and one last question for you. How familiar are you with Office Web Apps? Have you used the online Office Suite available from Microsoft yet? Thank you for answering my three questions this morning or afternoon, depending on what time zone you are in. It looks like most folks have not used Office Web Apps yet. About 72% have not. So we'll talk a little bit in Doug's introduction to OneNote about how if you don't have SharePoint or if you don't have Exchange set up, how you can still benefit from using the sharing features of OneNote by utilizing the free Office web apps that are available online. So I'm going to go ahead and move us along to introduce Doug and have him start his presentation to show us OneNote. And just to give you a little bit of his slide here is about OneNote and capturing creativity. He works with Office.com at Microsoft where there are thousands of free templates, training videos, help and how-tos. And he'll talk a little bit more about these resources throughout his presentation. And we will hopefully have time to show you a little bit of web apps <coughs> excuse me, as well. So, with that, please join us on the line, Doug, and take it away. He's going to go ahead and share his screen. Okay, I will do that. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, again, I'm, uh, I've am i used OneNote for about eight years. Uh, I've uh, been at Microsoft for about six and been in the training and the videos. I, most of the time I've done videos for um, uh, the help and how-to content. And just not straight screenshots, a little humor, a little uh, – uh, a little more personality-driven videos. And then for the last year we've been doing free Office webinars that are exactly for uh, I think your type of uh, what you're getting into, which is kind of the, what we call the end user. There's some 
terminology I probably shouldn't use ever again in a public call. Uh, but th those folks, uh, again, I was at uh, Amazon for years. I used OneNote, and I never knew about all the materials at Office.com, and they're available for you. So the, the templates, the training, the video. And uh, also if you're ever in an Office product, just click F1, and that gets connected to your um, to your uh, uh, the help and how-to content that we have there. And I'm going to click over and start sharing my screen here. In fact, uh, let me just put that slide back up that I have because I put that slide in OneNote. So, and if you just uh, if you can just let folks know if you're seeing that or not, I will then continue. It looks good so to me. And just for okay. folks, if they need to view the screen any, lar any larger, if it's hard to see, you can click the full screen button at the top of your menu, and that will allow you to view the whole screen throughout the presentation. So go ahead, Doug. Thanks. Great. Yeah. So one of the things you can do with OneNote is just basically put everything in it. Um, it works with images. It works with – this is just a PowerPoint slide I put in there. Um, it works with notes. And it's one of those things that uh, the reason I really like it and use it is it's one of the only things that I know that can combine personal and business and keep things separate when they need to be separate and together in one place when they need to be together in one place. And it works on, a, a, again, a variety of different content you can put in there. And also, really, it's one of the few things out there that if you're thinking about that whole paperless thing, you can do so much with OneNote, including printing your documents to OneNote, that if that's one of the things you tr are trying to do or your group is trying to do, OneNote is one of those things that can really help uh, organization and, and truly try to go paperless. Now, I don't go totally paperless, but it, it, it's one of the things that you can see that goes that's out there. Let me switch over and show you some slides and just kind of give you the layout since most folks have never been into one, have never opened OneNote. And um, let me go into um, – this, this is kind of a, a tutorial which is the first thing when you open OneNote that you'll get. just kind of explains everything. You can load OneNote onto your computer and keep your documents there, or you can put them with SkyDrive. SkyDrive is free. Um, it gets you 7 gigabytes of storage. I always tell people when I talk about it, if you do nothing else with this webinar, go to skydrive.com, sign in. You can store documents. It doesn't have to be Office documents. It can be JPEGs, um, uh, PDFs, whatever you'd like to. I mean, video files would probably be too little. But you can store those files there um, for OneNote, and then you can have them ac accessible to many things. OneNote works on a PC. There are apps for an iPad. There are apps for an iPhone. There are apps for an Android or a Windows phone. So you can get to this information on multiple computers, especially if you, when you upgrade um, to Office 2013. You can get it to from a multiple of computers if you're working on different computers, one at home, one at work. You can also put any, things anywhere on the page uh, because it, it's kind of this thing called Canvas. That's why I like it better than Word. Word's very much regimented into being text and you want a left-hand line. Here you can just put things anywhere you want to or move things around. I'm just going to move this over here. and Again, it just kind of goes anywhere I want it to, to place it. It's, uh, one notice has a notebook structure. Um, just like you probably had at school at one point. So the left-hand side are notebooks. The t inside of each notebook, there are tabs at the top of the screen. And then on the right-hand side, there are individual pages inside each tab. So it can get pretty complex. Um, but at the same time, one of the great things about doing all this stuff with OneNote is it's searchable. It's very searchable very quickly, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Here's just a couple of different things that you can do with OneNote. Most people think of OneNote if they've opened it before as you can clip things from the web. So you can do screenshots. Um, and I'll show you that. In just, let me just show you right, right now about how to do a screenshot. So if I'm looking at this page, oh, let's look at this page for the Office 15-minute webinars that um, I happen to host every Tuesday. Um, if I wanted to get some text for this, uh, there is a clipper tool. Um, if you have an earlier version of OneNote, you don't have this little box here which is called Send to OneNote. This is new for 2013. But you, if you, as long as you have OneNote on, um, you have to initially install it and, and open it up. Then uh, you, get, you can do a shortcut, which is um, Windows S, and that kind of grays your screen out a little bit. And then you just kind of grab the text that you want. 
and let go of the button. And then it will bring up this box. You can just copy it to the clipboard or regular cut and paste and then paste it anywhere you want to. The thing with OneNote is you want to save these things. So I'm going to send this to a part of OneNote. So let me send it to mm, this notebook here called Personal. I think I have a page for TechNet. Yeah, there it is. So now I'm going to send this to that page in OneNote. And let me open it up here. I got an error message. It might be because I'm doing a live demo, of course. Hmm, let me try that again. It always happens. I think because we're doing so much here with the screen that this might be causing a problem. Oops, excuse me. One more time. That's just nature, right? As soon as you're live, it's, that's when oh, sure. things don't copyright. <laughs> there we go. So it sends it to here. And um, again, I'm, I'm do running some errors because we're right at the bottom. It, it, it timestamps when you took the, the document. And it also should have timestamped uh, the URL. So I can show you what I've done on that. So you have a record of what you've been keeping. So this is really great when you're doing a lot of research. Or um, I have a page here of, of clippings every time there was a clipping because this, this webinar program was kind of a pilot program. So I didn't really have the kind of metrics that we're looking for here in standard. So I would just anytime we would see something where people were mentioning it, I just kind of kept a clipping of that. And I would have those URLs always uh, uh, with me, and I could, I could reference that, and, and uh, um, that's how I validate my work here sometimes. So that's one of the clipping uh, parts that it can work with in OneNote. Uh, let me go back to um, this kind of sample page. Other things that you can do, you can share your notebooks out on SkyDrive. That's the advantage of putting them on SkyDrive versus having them on your computer. So you can share out. I've done this with vacation trips. Uh, let me go over here into my family vacation. And again, as you can see on the left-hand side, I have business notebooks which may be on my computer. They may be on my SharePoint that I have here at work, or they may be in SkyDrive. And they're just all there together. So I can go back and forth. It's kind of like when you combine calendars. If you do that in Outlook, you might have a personal calendar and a business calendar. It's all right there. So these are some ideas for, for, for um, some vacation I'm going to Maine in June. So as I see things, I kind of plop them in here. And then this is where the search comes in up in the upper right hand corner. You can search for anything. So if I search, there's a, an island we wanted to go to called Peaks Island. So as I write the word peaks, it starts searching for anything that has the word peak. Now, that's quite a lot. Let me continue that and do island. And that gives me a little more. And then, oh, here's the article that had Peaks Island in it. And even goes right to the spot and makes the, and, and turns it yellow there. Oops, I just moved it so it didn't turn yellow. Let me try that again. So it can find that information for you in a snap. That's why one of the things we talk about is you can keep OneNote you know, really crisp and, and keep everything centered and straight. I always make the analogy I have twin daughters. One has a very clean, tidy room. One has a really messy room. You can do either because you can search for stuff immediately in OneNote. That's the great feature about it. So or for organization or if you're not organized, OneNote still works out really, really well for you. And there's other things you can do with um, um, some touch. And uh, OneNote is actually built for the original touch tablets that came out all the way back in 2003. Most people didn't have those. Now as we've gotten into touch, and especially with uh, OneNote 2013, there are some updates that, that works with touch and pens. Also, all Office programs will have this little up in the left-hand corner here, pardon me, um, a touch mode that will, if you are on a touch screen, it kind of spaces out everything if you saw that move. And that way you can get your fingers around. I'm, I'm not on a touch screen now, but even if I like this, this kind of uh, wider look, I could do that. Let me turn it back to the mouse mode. So that's, that's kind of what you, one of the things you've seen in Office, for Office 2013 that if you upgrade, you'll see that on all the programs. But um, OneNote has been always made well for touch. And one of the things that it works with even if you don't have touch, let me go back to this um, slide. If I wanted to make notes on this slide, I could simply pick the Draw tab and make notes or corrections, and I could augment my own slide basically as I'm, as I'm, if I'm sharing with somebody. And I could say, you know, this yellow stuff here has to be changed, or I like this or whatever. So you can draw 
free, freely draw on slides, photos, anything else you want with OneNote. <coughs> um, hey Doug, me. I didn't see that yeah. activity on your slides. So it's, oh, now it's showing up. Took there a moment go. there to render. So in case people weren't seeing what he was doing, looks like he added some highlights to that slide. Right. Up, so up in the up, uh, in the in the um, ribbon up here at the top, there's a draw tab, and you can use all these pens and and shapes and all that to your heart's content. It does. It's not just for. Um, like it's not just for if you have a touch screen. In fact, let me make a little yellow highlight around me there. Now I feel so much better. Um, let's see here. Other things that you can do uh, with OneNote. Um, let me. Um, let me show you one thing that I've done here on my home. So this is my home um, OneNote. I'll let it. I'll, I'll hold the screen so it can it can render a little bit. Um, and this is one that I would share. So um, we had to remodel a bathroom last year, and I knew nothing about remodeling or bathrooms. But I basically became the, the, the you know the the manager for the product for the contractors. So this is how I kind of worked on getting things and putting things in. And I also let it open if my wife saw ideas, she'd be able to do this. And we could also do this, uh, we both have Windows phones, though if you had an Android phone or an iPhone, you would be able to access this. So uh, on the right hand side here, are just I would clip things from pages of things we liked, faucets and stuff like that. That's all on the left hand side here. Oops, I'm still in the Draw tab there. Hang on. I go back to typing. So this left-hand side with this container here is uh, just things we saw. And then the, right, the left-hand side here is I was able to insert pictures. Uh, instead of writing down information about carpet remnants or whatever, I'm just able to put pictures and add this when I was on my phone to get, instead of writing down what the prices of all this stuff was. And this remodel is uh, done. We've had the new bathroom for a year. Uh, it's just, but again, OneNote kind of keeps everything and keeps it synced with everything. So this is how, um, again, I'm able to combine um, in the same OneNote screen business stuff and personal stuff um, with uh, working with OneNote. I could see that that would be really handy if you're an organization, say, holding a big event, like you have your annual fundraising event and you need to collect ideas for possible centerpieces and decor and collateral materials you want to print and you kind of want to collect all those ideas to create, you know, a, a, a lookbook of sorts. And that exactly. this would be really I mean, easy to plop that stuff into. Right. I mean, um, let me see if I can uh, do this real quick. This, um, I'll click over to this uh, page here. This is the scrapbook I use for anything that comes up about Office 15-minute webinars or anything we're doing, and I just plop it in here. And again, I don't have to organize. This is a screenshot I made just a couple days ago. And there at the bottom you can see the screen, when the screen clipping was taken and the URL if I wanted to reference that page. So that's how, and again, you can see all the pages I have on the right-hand side. I could organize those, but one of the things that um, uh, OneNote does is allows you to search even the stuff you screen clip. Let's go back. Um, let's see. I started. I was talking about uh, Peaks Island, and as you notice, when I did that, I was searching a printout of a New York Times article. So it actually searches the print where of of the things that you've printed, as long, as long as it's legible. I mean, if it's if this was a hand drawn page, it probably wouldn't work, and it does it automatically. So as you search for things or print things, in fact, one thing that I saw for years, and I think we've all seen it that we've had OneNote, and it probably irritates the people who've never opened OneNote, is sometimes when you go into the print menu, regardless of what you're printing, you get your printers, but you also get this button over here that says Send to OneNote. What is that? Why would I want to send something to OneNote? Well, if you don't have a printer available, if you uh, only have a black and white printer and you want to keep a color copy, you can print things here to OneNote. And that's what I did with this New York Times article. And that works for anything. So anytime you want to print something but uh, you want to be able to search for it. So let's say you have a 30-page document about uh, a year-end meeting. Okay? You could print it out and have it. You could have it in Word and open up Word and search for things. Or you can put it in OneNote and use the printout and be able to search through the printout. 
So that's again another way of that kind of scrapbooking that OneNote does very, very easily. And you just, it's, again, it's one of those things that just kind of stays around and you have it when you need it. Um, so Doug, does it work with PDFs that way too? So if somebody wanted to plop a screenshot of a PDF, will it read that? It should be able to read a PDF, yep. Okay, like great. Thinking, we had a, a couple of people ask some questions too that I can sure. I figure might might be good to interject a couple of them. So Absolutely. one person asked if you need to use SkyDrive in order to use OneNote. And when you mentioned the project with your bathroom renovation and how mm -hmm. you or your wife could both upload things how did you both have access to the same OneNote? What's the process for doing okay. that? Sure. Let's, uh, let's kind of switch over. Um, I will say this. Uh, some people think of this whole new with Office 2013, and some people who get this thing called Office 365, they think, wait a minute, this is all cloud stuff. No, no, no. You down, the, the product that we're talking about here for, for, for TechSoup, for, for nonprofits, is something you download to your computer and you would have it accessible anytime. Uh, you don't have to be on the Internet or not. You can, uh, let me go over here to the File menu and kind of show you what you can do with saving your items. As you can see here, I have lots of different notebooks, and I have some on SharePoint, I have some on SkyDrive, I think I even have a couple on the computer. The advantage for SkyDrive is that you can share that out. So let me click over to a page that I have in SkyDrive here. So um, again, so here is my SkyDrive. Um, some people may see it. Let me, there's two views. There's kind of a tile view, which is this one here. And then there is this uh, more of a traditional view, which I, I kind of prefer. Anything here that you see, you can, sh you can share with anyone. And let's just, uh, let's just talk about web apps in general and show you this. So one, web apps are free browser-based versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. So those four you can use, a, use a, in the browser for free. Um, and so let's see if I want to do a new Word document. Let's see what that looks like. We call it TechSoup. I miss, well, there's a little error I can fix later. And this will open up a document in the web app. Now I'm in a browser now. Word, uh, the web apps and SkyDrive would work on multiple browsers. I'm an Internet Explorer, but you could use it on Firefox, Safari, Chrome. Um, you could use it on uh, multiple machines. And um, then there's two ways to do it. Now, if you have Word, you could certainly open it in Word if you had it, or you can just use this. Now, as you can see, I have a bit of the ribbon. It's not the full ribbon, but I can have a home menu and I have an insert menu. I can change page layout. I can do all those things in Word. Let me uh, actually let me go back and, and just open up a document here instead of trying to create a new one. Um, the great thing about web apps is that you can share your documents with people internally or externally. You can control who has. Um, who, let me open up this marketing budget. You can control who has permissions with this. So here is, oh, this was one we had fun with. Okay, there's a lot of weird things there. We shared that screen. That's, again, probably should have checked what thing I should have opened beforehand. Um, so this is uh, Excel. Again, I have the ribbon. I can open it in Excel if I want to, but I don't need to. And then I can share this out. And I can share with people, which is what we'll do here. And then I can send a message. Now, this, this is one I've actually done with several other folks. So that's why they have permissions for there. Uh, but you can send them the email, or you can send people a link. You can send them just to view it or view and edit. So what I did with that OneNote notebook is it's on SkyDrive, and I sent an, a link with permissions to edit to my wife. So that's how you can share documents. Um, with that, and again, there's either you can send it as an email form, or if you're IMing with someone, you can just send it here um, with a link. You can create a link for view and edit, or you can make it public. And, and boy, public means public. It's just like Facebook. You want to be careful with that. But you know, some people do post directly to Facebook or LinkedIn. If you were doing some event and you wanted to post something directly to LinkedIn for announcing the event, you could do that here through the web apps. Again. Web apps are absolutely free. 
Um, all you have to do is go to skydrive.com to sign in. If you have a, I'm going to go to a different page here. I'm going to go one that kind of talks about it a little bit. But if you might already be signed up for SkyDrive because if you have, of course that's not going to work. If you have, um, let me get back to a page, then I can start talking at the same time. If you have a, if you have an Outlook.com account, if you have a Hotmail account, if you have an Xbox Live account. I think if you even have an old Messenger account, you already have a link to SkyDrive. Uh, you already have an account at SkyDrive. So you can start using the web apps right away. You can start using them right now if you want to. Um, I've gone here to um, uh, the page uh, that I work on. If you go to office.com, up in the uh, left-hand side, I'm, I'm sorry, in the left-hand top corner is uh, the support page. Let me just click on that. And this is where I do most of my stuff. The things, uh, there's free training that we can talk about that uh, are downloadable courses for all versions of uh, OneNote 2007, OneNote 2010, OneNote 2013. A lot of the stuff that we've talked about here will be under the Get Started, which suddenly is not available. This is wonderful. I love, nothing like live theater, folks. Here we go. So here is uh, the Get Started page. So if you're new with Office, you can get here. Uh, we have different levels of courses. If you're just new to the, n the newest uh, version of Office, we can train you. If you've never opened up OneNote before, you can go down here and right down here on the left and learn the basics. So we have all this stuff here. And one of the things I did want to point out is the Quick Start Guide. Uh, we have them for all our um, for all our programs, and it's a six-page guide you can download for free. Um, you can either print them out if you want to print them out for all your, um, for your staff or, go th or just um, do it online. This is the PDF that I've opened up here. Um, and it just goes through some of the basics of OneNote. Um, it talks about how to get them, you know, where, what to do with sharing the notebook and how the share tab works and just some other commands. You'll find these for all uh, uh, all the Office programs, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, it's a great little thing with resources that we have that's been one of the most successful things that we work on here. And again, you can find that all at the if you go to office.com slash get started or just click the support tab and look for the get started icon, which hopefully will appear any moment. There we go. Any right, other questions? Seth, do you think we can tackle? jump back to, yeah, well, we do have a lot of questions coming in, and we will try and address a lot of them. Can we jump back to OneNote itself? And we have folks who are wondering if you were just opening up the screen and you've got an empty page, some basic tips on just getting started. So it seems pretty okay. clear that this is a great digital notebook, your trapper keeper on speed <laughs> essentially. I get that and you reference. can you can you can plop in documents, you can plop in videos, you can plop in images, you can move things all around. I think people want to know how do you just get started if you're sure. gonna do something. Like say let's say we're planning a a library event. Like we're gonna have okay. a reading night. And okay. we wanna so, um, you don't have to plop in related content really, but sure. just to get an idea of what kind of stuff you could throw in here. Okay. Well, here's uh, some things. Let's say we're going to do reading night. Now, let's say I have a meeting for that. Uh, um, here's one thing. If you have Outlook integrated, you can just simply do meeting notes, uh, which we do. So this is actually looking at my meetings for today. And I'm going to plunk in this meeting here, which I think only I'm a member of. But it puts in the, the – there's the information of the folks that, are, that this is around. Um, and you can start a meeting right here. So that's one thing that you can get started right away if you're using Outlook. Other things you can do is let's do, let's do a to-do list. Let's do what we need to do. We need to um, 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 ready the book. <laughs> I'm just making things up here. And then there's step two. And then there's step three. And again, I can just write anywhere on here. If you are, are people love a tag. So here are tags that we have. So you can actually do a to-do tag. And now all, and then I can, let me do all these. All these will have to-do tags. And you can check those off as you go. Here, I'll just show you some of the other tags that we have here. So you can uh, tag things as you go. I have a, a page uh, of, that I keep up to date of all the things I'm working on at once, and that's what I use with my manager. And again, I, if you're a, a check-off person that you like checking off, or, or you read Russian literature, 
uh, bad joke there. You can just go and check this stuff off as you go with a to-do list. Other things you can insert include, again, attachments of files. So if you, want, if you have certain files here, so let's attach a file here. So let's say, okay, the, we have this really important um, memo here. And let me go over I should just kind of let me just point out this. This is a SkyDrive. Uh, one of the things you can do with SkyDrive is get a uh, download so you put it into your file explorer so you can grab things. So that's how you can grab different documents and stuff like that right from File Explorer or Windows Explorer, uh, depending on what you call it. Let me see if I can find a document here. Um, okay, let me grab this. And I can either attach, I can either insert a printout, or I can just attach a file. So there I go. I have this file that I always need for this event, and it's right there. I click on it, and I'll be able to get to it. I can also put in a spreadsheet for Excel. This, these are new for 2010, the Excel spreadsheet and the diagram for Visio if you have Visio. You can insert pictures. So if you want an online picture, let's see here. Let me uh, find some. Uh, so I can search Bing. I can go to my SkyDrive. I can go to my computer. Uh, let me go to Office and type Book Cover, and let's see what pops up. And I can insert pictures that way. Come on, baby, work for me. Nothing like a live demo. Okay, we'll come back to that. You can put in. Um, let me cut. You can put in audio. So if you, uh, I know some people that immediately are looking for something to um, get a memo on. They can do that. You can even record your video if you need to. Time and date. There's actually page templates. This is even people who have used OneNote don't realize that there's page templates. Um, you can open them here, and they'll appear on the right-hand side. And there's different ones here. We have uh, academic ones, so lecture notes. Uh, there's ones for business here. So if you have a project overview. And this is just started a new page, and I just click until I get the one that I want here. These are some media notes. These are pre-made, and you can make your own and then and and put them out. I always talk about the decorative ones. We did a couple of videos. If you need uh, if you need a page that has rainbows on it, I think we have you covered. Rainbow. There you go. You can do a rainbow. And again, as you notice, each time I click these, it just added a page right here on the right hand side. So templates can be used, and we also have some um, uh, online that you can get to. Um, and any template, even one that was made for OneNote 2003, will work on later versions, so you don't have to worry about that. There's definitely math. There's instant math you can do here in OneNote. So 135 plus 72 uh, times 15 equals 1,215. Um, so there's way smarter math. than I am. <laughs> you can do here's here's a whole bunch of here's stuff that uh, here I'm going to look really smart. Let's put in the uh, I don't know how to pronounce these, let alone what they are. But there's some equation I put in there. A lot of people use math. Now, one of the things you saw here, as soon as I clicked on the math, I get what's called a contextual tab. You'll find those uh, starting with the word 20. I'm sorry, with Office 2010. That when you're in a certain function, using pictures, using a table, new tabs will appear. They only appear when you are working on that part. So as soon as I click away from this math um, uh, equation, that tab will go away. Click on it again, and that tab appears. So that's an equation tool that's in OneNote. Again, OneNote was built uh, for you know, thinking of students way back when, so there's a lot of functions for that. We talked about the Draw tab if you had the add color or um, other than that. There has been, there, if since day one, there has been ink to math and ink to text. So if you are drawing with a pen, you can, you can, that text can be changed into type. I can't really function that right. I can't really show that off with the screen I have here. Um, and then there's other things here about authors. Uh, if you're working on a book together, um, you can have it that you can have the little initials of who's worked on what so you can see what's changed on a page. Um, I just don't think I'm set up to show that right now either. Um, and then let me show you some of the deluxe things people do. People create events for for public events. Do, we went to a, a here's a, a two point, Mom 2.0 conference we went to in New Orleans, and the public relations folks put together this um, notebook that you could download for free. So this was a this was on SkyDrive. People could download it as a OneNote web app if they don't have OneNote, and then they could put it into OneNote. So they had you know everything from what to bring 
to some travel itineraries of where you were staying. The full schedule of the conference was here. Your own things for notes, things to do in New Orleans. All that stuff was added. There's, there's the little thing, this little EJ thing here. That shows you that uh, a different author has worked on this page. So this was something that people could download and use at the event. And you could do this for your own event. You could export a OneNote notebook or a page uh, or a section to folks, um, again, if you want to just do it as a standalone versus having a shared notebook. So it's very flexible on that. I, there's probably a few more questions because I've just tackled a whole bunch of stuff. Yep, there's actually a lot of questions coming in, and we've captured most of them, or we are capturing all of them on the back end. And somebody was asking for some clarification. Susan was asking about, so what's the difference between the notebooks or on the left and the tabs along the top? So are the tabs sure. for the same yep. notebook? Correct. So I am currently in this Mom 2.0 notebook. That's the, so those are all my notebooks on the left-hand side. And think of that as books on a, you know, notebooks on a case. In this note, Mom 2.0 notebook, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 tabs. Okay, so here is the Things to Do in New Orleans tab that I'm in. In this tab, there are two pages on the right-hand side, Places to See, Places to Eat. Now I'm going to click over to another uh, one. Let's um, click into the home stuff that I have. And I'm not going to go through all these because I don't need you to see everything. But as you can see, I have several tabs at, at, uh, at the top here, which include at home, food, which is where I kind of keep a recipe file, travel information, money information, uh, my daughter's soccer team, um, some things like that. And then each of these, so I'm on the bathroom tab. This was for my bathroom remodel. I put in dimensions. I put in a shower drawing. I can put, show you that. So this was a, I copied someone's drawing, though you can draw in OneNote if you want to. Uh, this was just a picture of, of one of the drawings that we had, uh, dimensions. So I could keep everything, um, I could keep everything in one place basically. So that's kind of the structure of it. Notebooks, tabs inside notebooks, pages inside tabs. And as you can see so here at the top, you can, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna I was just gonna ask if you say you insert a document into OneNote, you have a Word document that you want to insert, and uh -huh. you go back to that Word document, you make some edits, will that automatically update in OneNote as well? If you I'm trying to think. Um, if it's on your computer, when you click on it again, it just opens it on the computer. If you keep it on SkyDrive, you click on it, it will open up in SkyDrive. So yes. If you, of course, print it out, it's just a printout. That won't change. But uh, the little icon that we had for that document, and again, I can't remember. Here we go. I'm going to use this. Um, I can't remember what notebook I was working in, but we called it Reading Night. And then I type in Reading, and then it goes right there, and I'll click on that, and now I know what the page was. So this April, this April document, as long as it's, uh, this is on SkyDrive, so if I updated the SkyDrive document, the next time I clicked on this, as long as I was connected to the Internet, that's where you, you would have a disconnect. If you are offline, when you click on it, you would just get the latest copy that you had. Great. Can photo galleries be placed on websites if they're in OneNote? So like if you capture a bunch of photos in OneNote, maybe from your own hard drive or from your own digital mm -hmm. camera, can then you then go place them into a web page if you want to share them on Facebook? I don't. My first thought would be no, but let me think here. In fact, let me go back to my um, photos in um, – that's a good question. I'm thinking. I'm thinking hard. No problem. While you think, I'm thinking of a million different ways that I could use this in an office setting where you know, maybe we have a notebook that's just called marketing meeting, and we have tabs for each marketing meeting's notes, and we just capture the brainstorms, the notes, the announcements, and add the checklist for the different to-dos that come out of those meetings right into a different tab for each meeting so that anytime we have a meeting, we can pop back into our OneNote, see what to-dos yep. were left, if they were done or not, check out the notes, check out the brainstorms. It seems like a great place to keep collaborative meeting mm -hmm. notes. It seems like a, a lightweight, probably, project management system. So if you don't want to yeah. dive into using something like Microsoft Project, 
to set up a really in-depth project, it could be a great way to say you're having this event and you want to have three different people working on different pieces of it. You brainstorm, mm -hmm. you have your event details, your venue info, your menus, all in different tabs or different notebooks depending on how big you want to make it. And you can have a lot of those to-dos and timelines listed out in OneNote and shared with your coworkers who are collaborating on it. Absolutely. Um, and uh, again, I've, uh, I'm trying to be a jack of all trades with, with Office project I've never really gotten into. So any project I have done, I have done here in OneNote. To answer the question, so these pictures were taken with my cell phone and placed into OneNote. I've never done anything else with them. I would have to save as and, and then save it as a photo somewhere, and then that's the only way I could do it. So there's not a, you know, you can, there's not a direct cut and paste or anything like that that you can do um, or that's it, that it, it's stored someplace else on your picture file. You have to do it separately. So that is, I guess, one drawback. If you're collecting pictures, you can. But again, I'm not really collecting really nice pictures here. I usually collect ideas and thoughts and, and, and pictures of, of things like that. In fact, here's one of the things that I would do here if I was collecting you know, things I liked or collecting items. I'm going to go to this page here, which is Office. I'm going to hit the Windows S key, and I'm going to grab this image. I'm not really grabbing an image. I'm just really grabbing a, a, a screenshot of that picture. And then let me send it to that location. And there it is. And look, it actually worked this time. So here's that image. It's not really an image. It's just a screen clipping. But I have the information of where I had it. That URL is live. I can click on it and go back to the page. And when I took it, uh, which is uh, exactly today. So that's how I kind of collect images per se with one uh, with um, with OneNote. Now, one thing that some it's kind of cool, but kind of not. But I just wanted to kind of show it off. There, if you right-click an image, there is this copy text from picture. It's got to be a really clear picture, and I'm going to test with this one here. Um, if you take a picture of someone's business card, a close-up, usually this will work just fine. That you can right-click and then paste that text right next to it. And yeah, see it kind of came through funky as SkyDrive. So some people, uh, that's something that some people know right away from OneNote. And it's not the sharpest of features though. The one time I've used it is for taking pictures of business cards and then I can get that information into my contacts um, versus doing other things. So that I uh, just wanted to kind of show that. And um, I wanted to do another live experiment just to see if things would work. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Well, we do have a lot of questions coming in, so I'd like to pop through a few more quickly if we can. Sure. Um, so can notebooks be saved and shared in a Windows in a network drive, or do they have to be shared over SkyDrive? No, they can be if you're on um, – well, if you're on SharePoint, you can definitely do it. Um, other, they should be able to be stored on other ones. I can't remember if there's a like something like a Dropbox scenario, but it should be able as long as you can get as long as you can work with the browser and everything seems to be working in the browser, you should be able to use SkyDrive because again, I'm just I'm not using OneNote per se. I'm using a browser to get um, the information that I need. So I'm trying to click back to the page here where I was on SkyDrive. Again, I'm, uh, as long as you could get to pages like this when you were um, in uh, working with SkyDrive, you should be able to save it to um, other things. I can, I, you know, I, that's one of the things maybe we can, we can put on, if I can find an article later and put it up on your site. I don't know the full scenario of it. Um, but again, it, this is a browser-based system, so you should be able to um, uh, save and work stuff as long as, you, as long as the browser works. So if you wanted to just use OneNote on your desktop though and save it, mm -hmm. like say you have an Exchange server in your office and you want to just save it to your local Exchange server network, um, yep. can you give access to coworkers to only be able to view specific notebook or to open up a shared file the same you way that you could with most other kinds of documents? Yes, you can. In fact, the older versions of OneNote before we started working about SkyDrive had that uh, accessibility to it that you could put it up on an ex in, in an exchange world and people will get it. I don't know if you can – I believe though it was just like either the notebook was shareable or it was not. It wasn't you can do certain sections or certain pages. Um, 
And here's the same same way. I mean, these are these are documents. So this um, let me I'm going to click on this OneNote and we'll see what it looks like. Um, I want to open this as a web app though. So let's open this in the web app. No, nope, it's going to open it right. I think I have I have it probably set up that it automatically open it up in OneNote. So you could open this up in OneNote, or you could open it up in uh, the web app. But uh, again, it'd be certain sections you could you could share and send. Um, it's you could send individual pages with OneNote 2013, but to share you would. Um, let me click on that sharing again. Again, you're going to share that entire notebook with somebody, and you can control whether they can edit it or not. So here's the little checkbox here you can turn on and off. And then you can always okay, see. Okay, so if you have specific tabs of that notebook that you don't want to share, then maybe you just need to move them to a different notebook. Yep. Okay, that makes makes good sense. We also had some questions about. So when I save a document, it goes to SkyDrive. Even if I want it to go to OneNote on my desktop, is there a way to change that? Like is there a way to have it saved just to your OneNote on your desktop? Sure. Um, for OneNote, for Office 2013 basically, there was a big bet to put stuff into the cloud. So I think for many of the programs, there's the default. On other versions, the first default was to your desktop. Um, so when you save something, you can uh, so I went to the File menu here. Um, when I press New, I can, I can tell it where I want to save it. Again, SkyDrive is my default, but I could say I have a couple different test environments I have here. I, have my, I can save it on my computer, uh, other web locations. I can add a place. So I can do all of that. I can make the decision right when I'm doing a new one. When, uh, and then uh, when you have older notebooks, you can certainly move them over. So if you're going from OneNote 2010 to um, uh, another version uh, to, to, to OneNote 2013, you want to move it in the cloud. There's a pull down menu here that you can, sh you can share and move right from this screen, and you can move it into the cloud uh, pretty quickly this way. Either or, it doesn't matter what you want to do. You could probably even take this one. This one happens to be in SkyDrive. I could probably move it to my hard drive if I wanted to. But again, if I move it to my hard drive, the accessibility story goes away. And that's what OneNote is so great with is Android phones, iPhones, iPads, Windows phones, other computers can get to that information when you need it. And that's what makes it such an accessible thing. If you've seen the commercial that played a couple months ago, you know, the dad's in the grocery store and he's trying to get the groceries and the kids are back in their place adding things to the grocery list as he's shopping for them. And that's a real-time story. That can happen. On OneNote, it's looking to update every second. So if you are in the same notebook at the same time, you get real up-to-date uh, information rolling every few seconds, depending, of course, upon your Internet connection. But that's one of the powers of OneNote is that sharing story. So to put it on your, your own computer is some people feel more protected by that. I totally understand that. Um, SkyDrive has got a lot, and, and the web apps have passed many of the uh, rigid tests of governments and around the world and school districts. Um, and there's full documentation on that if you need to, if, if safety is a big key for you. Great, that's really helpful. And you know, we have people asking, can they also be used on BlackBerry, or is it only available with apps for iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, and you know, there was a Symbian, Surface? Yeah, there was a Symbian story at one time, and I don't know if that's changed. It's something I had it down here. It's something to look up for another project I'm doing. Um, I can uh, let me find the page where that information is, and you can click there yourself and find out. But um, okay, we can always follow up after the webinar as well. Okay, great. We also had some folks wondering about compatibility between older versions of OneNote. You know, if they're using 2007 and they're trying to upgrade to 2013, will those files and notebooks, will those move over yeah, pretty seamlessly, yeah, or is there a process to save them into a different file? Uh, once you open them the first time in the new product, they will say, this is an older version. I'm trying to figure out if I can get that screen up. I don't think I can. There is a conversion. Um, there is a conversion box that usually pops up 
I don't think I can see it here. It happens the first time you open it up, and you can either stay in the old one if you want to. I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to, you could keep it in the 2007. Um, there is, uh, an, or you could it, just the one press, and it will convert it to 2013. Um, the, there is no conversion between 2010 and 2013. They all work the same. I think you might have to, you know, it will say this is an old one. Uh, but there's no where we have changed the formats for things like Word and PowerPoint over time. There was no change from OneNote 2010 to OneNote 2013. Great. Now, if somebody shares a file with somebody, or they they give permissions to someone to edit, and they accidentally mm -hmm. delete it, is there a way to restore that from SkyDrive, or you know, if I guess it depends on where they're deleting it, but if somebody messes up one of your shared files, what options are there to right. do anything about that? The edit, I'm trying to think of the edit story versus the, um, versus the delete story because they have permission to edit, they have permission to delete it. Golly, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know offhand um, because if I share a document with you and let me go in here. So here's some documents I've had, and th they're listed who, if they're shared or not, which is great. Um, and I can delete it here, but I don't know if they have the capability to do it because when they get the link, they don't go to this page. This is my SkyDrive page. They go to, let me open up something here. Let me open this marketing budget. This will be a little cleaner. They go right to this page. So they're, um, so I'm on the web app. Going to get some nice clarity with this stuff. If I go to File, I don't have a delete key. Um, there oh. is, yeah. <laughs> and then the here there's, and then here there's previous versions. So you can click on that. And if someone messes up, I don't know if I have previous versions for this. One. Let's find out. Yeah. So here are the previous versions of this document. So that's all in SkyDrive. This is again, I'm in the web browser here doing this stuff. So that's that. I think that's the story. Is they they wouldn't be able to delete it, and if they mess with it, <laughs> um, you can one cut them off. You can say they can't share anymore, and you can find the previous versions. That's terrific to know that there's a a revision control <laughs> ability yep. in there. We and, had some other questions. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We're almost out of time, so I want to make sure we get through a couple okay. more questions before we wrap up. We had a couple asking about compatibility with other tools. For example, some of the like if you put checklists into your meeting notes or into your to-do list for that event you're planning, can you transfer those into a project management tool like Microsoft Project? Is there a way to connect them or make them interactive? I don't know quite frankly, because I don't know project that well at all. Um, you can cut and paste them, I mean, if that's something you're trying to do. Um, uh, so I don't really know the story on that. But again, you can share stuff with the OneNote. The compatibility for OneNote is basically built on um, Outlook, Excel, and any Office program, including Internet Explorer, you can find things that say send to OneNote. Um, so there is that compatibility. So it's more of a send to OneNote feature versus a OneNote to something else feature. So for those project things, if you don't just cut and paste it, um, I don't know what the story would be on that. Sorry to say. No problem. Thanks so much for trying to tackle that one. We had some people asking about how it compares with tools that they've used for note taking like Evernote on mobile apps. And it looks like this offers quite a bit more robust notebooks and tabs and interactivity compared to a mobile version. But I wonder how does OneNote's mobile versions compare with something like Evernote? I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with that tool. But. Yeah, I've I'm, I'm, got to say I've been at Microsoft six years, so I've done very, very little with Evernote. Um, but the, ro uh, the Office web apps uh, continue to update. They continue to have new features rolled out. Um, something's going to be you know, a preference to what they want to use. Um, but if they're um, you know, using uh, even Office for Mac or something like that, they, they, uh, they, there's not a OneNote uh, per se for the Office for Mac suite, but they can certainly use the, um, 
the features that you can find in an iPad um, and an iPhone. Um, so I, I, I'm not really a comparison person. That's not my area. Um, but um, you know, if anyone's online, they might be able to say it on that. But yeah, I mean, the 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 apps will be updated. The web apps continue to be updated, and of course, the best experiences with a Windows Phone because it's built by the same people. So there's some really great compatibility with the Windows Phone that you can do almost everything I do on this. One note, including changing figures on Excel charts and getting the graphs and all that, it all comes through with the Windows Phone really nicely. Great. Thanks so much for that. So with that, we have to actually wrap things up here. We did answer most questions, but I know there were a few still lingering. We will try to address those in the follow-up, and you'll also receive the materials discussed today in an email later on this afternoon. As I'm wrapping up, I just want to steal the screen back from Doug here. Sure. And we have a few little samples of how TechSoupers use OneNote. So things like global media planning, and you can see that they have action items listed out with checklists. And I'm going to just show you really quickly, we have a couple of articles that give some more step-by-step -step on how to use OneNote, particularly geared toward nonprofits and libraries. One is called, Is Microsoft OneNote the One for You? And the link is at the bottom of this slide that you'll receive in that email later on this afternoon as well. It talks about some of the features and how some of us use it in the office environment. And we also have one that shows some of the new features in both PowerPoint and OneNote 2013, things like putting the video in and doodling, drawing on your OneNotes. And I know we're a little bit over time, but I just want to walk you through quickly what the donation program looks like here at Microsoft, where you can, receive, you can request a donation if you're an eligible nonprofit or public library of OneNote as a standalone product for a $4 administrative fee. Or you can get it as part of your Office Suite, either Professional Plus or Office Standard for the admin fees listed. If you have requested or received a donation of TechSoup or through TechSoup of a Microsoft Office product that has OneNote already, you may be eligible to upgrade for free within two years of having received that. So if you're on Office 2010 and you'd like to try 2013, you may be able to upgrade with no cost through Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center with Software Assurance. Some additional resources. These um, show the Quick Start Guide that Doug mentioned earlier, the 15-minute webinars that he does every Tuesday, and a one webinar that they previously did, the links to those two articles, and then the Software Assurance Program that also offers e-learning courses in addition to what's available on Microsoft or on Office.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Doug, for taking the time to share your expertise. And feel free to join us next Thursday, same time, same place at 11 a.m. Pacific time for how to download your Microsoft software donations. And you can also take a tour of the new Office if you're not sure whether to upgrade or not at the link shared here. We had a webinar last week on Publisher and we have a whole series of webinars on the different Office Suite products to help you optimize how you are using them in your office. Thank you also to ReadyTalk for hosting this webinar on their platform and donating it to us for our use to share these informative webinars with you. Take a moment after you have logged out of the webinar platform to complete our post-event survey so we can improve them for future events. Five equals excellent, one equals poor. So please give us some great feedback. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much everyone, and have a terrific afternoon.